Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a deadly duo in love that loves reacting to some death battle. Yes, we do. And so for this death battle, uh, we got Godzilla versus Gamera. And if you want all of our death battle reactions, check out the description of this video. We got a playlist there for you. As well as a link to our Patreon and get early ad-free access to our death battles. Yay. And a bunch of other videos that we do here in Definitely Not Definitive. Before we start death battle, oh, we need to tell you how we do this because it's, it's, it's complicated. <laughs> So if you've watched those before, you know that we like to place bets on death mm. battles. So this year to make it interesting, we've got money. Yeah. So what we do is we watch the first half of the video where they talk about the characters, their special skills, armors, abilities, advantages, disadvantages. Then we stop it, place our bets, and then we'll watch the actual death battle to see which one of us wins, mm. or at least who comes out with more money. <laughs> um, and then at Thanksgiving, whoever has the most money by then will choose our cosplay outfits for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Kaiju, the Japanese word for a giant monster that destroys everything around it, like Godzilla, the king of the monsters. And Gamera, the guardian of the universe. Despite being box office rivals for half a century, these two enormous creatures have never met <laughs> until today. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. The year was 1954, less than a decade after Little Boy and Fat Man had decimated Japan. The nuclear age had begun. As the United States tested their shiny new hydrogen bombs across the Pacific, one of them woke something up. Hmm. I don't think I've ever seen the original Godzilla. The radioactive yeah. rampaging savior slash destroyer of Japan. Mutated by nuclear energy, Godzilla stands over 300 feet tall and weighs 90,000 tons. Damn. He is an <laughs> yeah. unstoppable force. Somehow has knowledge in and judo and boxing. Reason, Godzilla <laughs> has made Japan his personal playground and has been stomping through it for 60 years. Couldn't he have picked on some other country? <laughs> 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 Godzilla's radioactive mutation leaves everything in his wake contaminated. Water, plants, even people. Godzilla's presence alone turns a city block completely uninhabitable. Like that noisy upstairs neighbor, or people who let their dogs shit in your front lawn. <laughs> But Godzilla does not simply walk past his enemies to destroy them. Nice dodge. His strength is insane. Ooh. He once lifted and threw his arch rival Kaiser Ghidorah, who weighs 100,000 freaking tons. He channels this strength through his claws, teeth, tail, and epic gravity defying drop kicks. <laughs> nice. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. I can say, yeah. Abilities aside, Godzilla would not be such a legendary kaiju without some serious firepower. He can emit atomic energy from his body for a short range nuclear pulse. Or hmm. fire his signature atomic breath, a goddamn laser beam of pure radiation. That's like microwaving at least a hundred balls of tinfoil. Well, give or take a few million. Whoa. Yep. <laughs> the atomic breath can melt, burn, or blow up just about anything. And you know it just can't smell good. I mean, that's <laughs> a lot of fish. No, 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 no. That right there is Zilla, the bastardized and shamed American version that Toho literally bought the rights to and completely rebranded just to murder on screen. <laughs> oh. Take that, oh. America. And that was just the real Godzilla's standard atomic breath. Yep. After absorbing a giant pterodactyl soul, okay, he <laughs> gained the power to boost his breath to the red spiral ray. An attack so deadly, it only took a few blasts to obliterate the more powerful clone of himself, Space Godzilla. What? Space Godzilla? Yes, Space Godzilla is a thing. Move it. <laughs> what? Uh -oh. Godzilla's like space cell cop. structure can quickly regenerate from all manner of wounds. And despite being vulnerable to man-made electricity, he possesses magnetic properties. Like a lightning rod, he can attract thunderbolts from the sky and use nature's power to enhance his own abilities. Or turn himself into a giant living magnet. <laughs> Magnets, how do they even work? Well, believe it or not, that isn't the weirdest thing that Godzilla can do. If Big G needs to get somewhere quick, he bends over, charges up, and does this. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god. Well, at least Japan is creative. Wait, can that happen? <laughs> Scaling to the present to actually lift his body means the atomic breath must have a force of over 328 <laughs> trillion psi. Oh That's my god. That's the equivalent of one trillion riot control fire hoses, <laughs> enough to wrap around the earth 38,000 times. Damn. Godzilla has 44 known victories, largely Nine due losses. to his insane durability. He's fallen into a volcano, survived a black hole, and tanked a meteorite point blank without a scratch. But despite popular belief, Godzilla is not invincible. His regeneration takes time, his speed is lacking, and Kills despite having two brains, one in his skull and the other where his tail meets his torso, he's pretty darn clumsy. <laughs> where were you on that one, ass brain? <laughs> he officially lost a fight against King Kong, and he's even died in four separate films. But Godzilla's <laughs> victories definitely outweigh his failures. There's a good reason they call him the King of the Monsters. Hmm. The year was 1965, the apex of the space race. Technology was advancing further and faster than ever before, but no one could have anticipated the bioengineered marvel hidden beneath the waves. Eons ago, the ancient people of Atlantis learned how to construct life and foolishly decided to play God. But instead of creating something safe like a dog or a bunny, they created giant flying laser shooting murder birds. <laughs> nice. Surprise, surprise, they couldn't be controlled and they turned 100% of Atlantis into oceanfront property. <laughs> so what was their solution to counter these giant destructive monsters? Why another giant destructive monster, of course. Enter Gamera, guardian of the universe and friend to all children. You are a mama. Gamera doesn't hurt people. He likes us. Friend to all children? That's a terrible title. How about Gamera, the flying, fire-breathing ninja turtle of doom? That's actually not far off. For a 260-foot, 10,000-ton turtle, Gamera is quite agile. He sticks it! His arsenal includes two huge tusks, twin elbow spikes, and a fire breath so strong it can be used underwater, despite being, you know, fire. fire. <laughs> Technically, it's highly concentrated plasma, the fourth state of matter. The hottest plasma ever created by man exceeded 3.6 million degrees Fahrenheit. That's hotter than the surface of the sun. Gamera's fireballs can burn through practically anything. And when he's not spitting hot fire, he fucking eats it! That's <laughs> true, a fiery four-course meal can quickly heal and re-energize him. Oh, sweet. Wow. Naturally, as a giant turtle monster, he can retract <laughs> his limbs and head into his shell for extra defense. And then fire rocket jets out of the holes and freaking fly! What the <laughs> fuck is this?! <laughs> Why can't my turtle do that? Someday, Mr. Snappy. Someday. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, sweet! Gamera can fly at speeds breaching Mach 3, over 2200 wow. miles per hour. That's faster than the world record holding SR-71 Blackbird. But how the hell does he know where he's going? Hmm. And more importantly, how does he not puke his guts out? Yes. The Atlanteans built Gamera using mana, an ethereal energy force connecting all things, places, and people. Everything has a finite pool of mana, which can be measured using a Sega Dreamcast. <laughs> oh, but it still can't play DVDs. <laughs> a person's mana is dependent on how much influence and authority they possess over others. As Gamera literally holds the world's fate in his claws, his mana levels are off the charts. Gamera can manipulate his mana in combat, which is useful when you've lost your arm and need to give your enemy a kaiju-sized falcon punch. <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> and if Gamera ever runs low on mana, he can summon more from the Earth itself. <laughs> That's pretty damn nifty. Wow. I think he got him. 
<laughs> fast enough to catch a missile going Mach 10, capable of flying through outer space, and tough enough to survive a nuclear explosion which leveled the entire city of Sendai. As Sendai is about 152 miles across, this explosion must have yielded nearly 112 megatons of force. Damn. Gamera yeah. has a fierce will to fight. No matter how much pain he's in, he'll keep pushing forward for the win. Huh. And he's not just determined, he's actually quite brilliant. He tactically seeks to exploit enemy weaknesses and is apparently smart enough to repair an alien spacecraft. He does machines. <laughs> but despite his intelligence, he is not infallible. Mm. Gamera's supposedly impenetrable defenses have been pierced before. And Ooh. remember, Gamera is explicitly the guardian of Earth, which does not necessarily include humanity. In fact, Gamera fears mankind may one day become the Earth's greatest enemy. I knew he sounded too good to be true. He's a hippie turtle. <laughs> Gamera has a strange fondness for children. Um, Gamera. Gamera. <laughs> he will bring kids to his bed, touch them like no other can. Please don't tell on Gamera. No, really. Actually, he <laughs> sacrificed his life to save children on multiple occasions, even used his ultimate self-destruct move, all for the safety of innocent children. Hmm. Oh. oh. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm gonna go 10. Ooh, that's big for her. I'm putting 10 on Gamera. 10 on Gamera, huh? Yep. Uh, there were a lot of things I saw that I liked in terms of his abilities. I also just kind of like his personality as well. Um, the whole like friend of children, the whole kind of like defender of the earth. I mean, plus he can like spin through the air at, at a much faster speed than Godzilla can fly. So I also felt like some of his his things compared to Godzilla's put him at an advantage. I was thinking about Gamera too. Um, just cause he can like absorb like his mana from the earth and everything. Uh, I think that's pretty powerful. Then, you know, he's got the weakness of kids. And so Godzilla like, doesn't give a fuck. So he'll just <laughs> be destroying stuff. And then maybe Gamera will be like, no, I got to protect the children and then blow himself up. So I'm going to go only five on Godzilla. King of monsters for a reason. Okay. All right. The combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. It's time for a death battle. All right. Let's mm -hmm. do it. Slumber. Death to toys. <laughs> oh. Hey, here it comes. Go, Godzilla! I'm throw a building at you. <laughs> I'm run straight through that building. Well, shit. Oh! Whoa! Head uppercut. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, Gamera! Come on! Do your drop kick. Yeah, no, something on fire. Yes! Yes! Do it! <laughs> Do it! Yeah, that was that was a good thing. That was awesome. Oof.
Knocked down, but not knocked out. Yeah. Also, Gamera being smart. That was another thing I was gonna make me pick him. <laughs> oh, yeah! Right on like a surfboard. <laughs> uh oh. The other thing, too, is when comparing the wins and losses, mm -hmm. Godzilla has more losses. Mm -hmm. it's like nine to three. In the lost category. It's like, okay. It's like, so Gamera wins more often, which is good. Get him! Spinning. Ooh. Yeah! Snap his little shell. Uh oh. Oh! <gasps> no! Oh, bye, Godzilla! Uh-oh. This is not looking good. This is definitely not looking good. Slice it off. Just throw me into the sun. Oh! He's taking him back now. Damn. That's gonna kill a lot of people. Yep. Question is, will it kill Godzilla? He does not appear to be dead yet. Shocked him. She just left him up in space. Yeah. Ooh. I think water is where Godzilla has the advantage. But this is a giant turtle. It's different when it's watching from. Yeah. Oh! oh no! It can regenerate, right? Oh, poor turtle! Call upon your mana. This is what it comes down to. He's got the more power! You still get Godzilla? No. speed advantage, but Godzilla's sheer size and power won this bout. He's nine times heavier. Plus, while yeah. Gamera tanked a city-busting nuke and almost died, Godzilla tanked a similar explosion from a meteorite and didn't even flinch. <laughs> Gamera's shell was once pierced by Virus, a physically weaker foe. There's no doubt Godzilla could overpower this giant turtle. Hell, he's strong enough to match goddamn Thor. And since Godzilla's atomic breath is composed of pure radiation, not fire, Gamera could not feed off of it. But most importantly, mm. Gamera has a history of winning through retreating. 
He usually takes one round to analyze his foe and another to win the day. On paper, this sounds like a smart idea. But unfortunately for Gamera, Godzilla don't play like that. <laughs> it's like Godzilla put Gamera through living shell. The winner is Godzilla. I'm sorry. Godzilla's a dick. <laughs> First King Kong, now Gamera. I will always choose someone against Godzilla because I want him to die. <laughs> Well, I mean, he's, he's lost a couple times. We'll have to see the, watch the movies or whatever where Godzilla loses. Yeah, I want like a compilation of all of Godzilla's losses. <laughs> That'll just soothe the burn a little bit. Um, So, uh, cop a little bit. I got 270 and you're down to 305. Mm. Leads, uh, you know, just shrink, just shrinking a little bit this time. I should have went bigger on, on Godzilla, the king of monsters. Um, what would you think of the battle overall? I thought it was a good battle. Yeah. And and I did like the fact that like as it went on, I was like, oh, now it's going in this direction. And then, you know, the next second it's like, oh, but no, now it's swung back this way. Mm -hmm. Um, so I did like that it kept us guessing. I like that there were yeah. a lot of elements to it. Like, I didn't predict Gamera taking Godzilla to space. That yeah. was nice. I don't know why I didn't just leave him up there. That would have been better. But uh, yeah, I, I liked it overall. What about you? Yeah, I liked it. You said um, the creativity of it, like uh, going to different locations. Like they fought in the water, they fought in the city, they fought up in the uh, up in space, and it was like very on brand with um, the like you know movies that they are, are coming from. So I thought that that was a nice stylization there for yeah. um, the fight itself. And yeah, and you know, I mean, they obviously picked the right winner. Uh, oh, whatever. <laughs> You'll let us know what you thought about this down below in the comments. And if you want uh, all of our death battle reactions, check out the description of this video. We got a playlist there for you. So as a link to our Patreon and get early ad free access. Yeah. Thanks so much for checking out our reaction for death battle Godzilla versus Gamera, but just keep in mind. That our reaction is definitely not definitive. <laughs>